remains confusion about what big picture reviews are. There remains confusion about how we do them the best way. There remains confusion on their meaning, their definition, and whether even differences actually exist between big picture reviews. So we are at that critical junction where systematic reviews have reached a period of blessed maturity where all the hard work has been done, I say that jokingly, but a lot of the methodological how-tos have been confirmed. We haven't reached that in big picture reviews. There's not been, there's most since 2005 when we had a lot of scoping review methods actually come out. So we are still in a period of the pimply adolescent child and that's why we need your help. So how do big picture reviews differ? Why are they different? Why have we separated them out? Why haven't we just called them all scoping reviews or all mapping reviews or all evidence and gap maps? And I'm not going to lie, there are definitely similarities. Now that QR code will take you to that infographic so you can have it on your phone. So we developed this infographic to really break down those differences between these big picture reviews because it was a challenge in trying to explain the differences. So what you'll find is that there is generally a similar purpose in basically trying to find what is the available evidence. Now that goes across from scoping reviews, mapping reviews and evidence and gap maps, but there's differences in those as well. So for example, when you're having a scoping review, you're most likely going to want to know maybe characteristics or concepts, factors. So the difference of purpose also then influences the question. And now we say broad question, this is broad question compared to a systematic review, but what about to each other? So for us, a scoping review is a narrower research question compared to a mapping review, which is what is the available evidence? But a scoping review might be going, well, what are the outcomes in that particular field? And an evidence and gap map will probably provide us what is the available evidence, but maybe from a particular sector or even subsector. But that is quite large, um, broader than what we would say a mapping review is. All of them most likely include different evidence sources. And this is where scoping reviews and mapping reviews and evidence and gap maps really truly shine, because we include everything. But that's also why they're massive and take a lot of resources as well. So we'll include books, blogs, web pages, um, qualitative, quantitative, discussion papers, all in the one type of review. That impacts on things like extraction as well. Now a scoping review for us can be very detailed extraction. And as anyone who has maybe heard about our evidence synthesis taxonomy initiative scoping review, we have done quite a lot of detailed extraction. However, mapping reviews and evidence of gap maps may be that high level detail. Yes, no responses, for example, preconceived responses. And the evidence of gap map is you're actually developing a code um, to be able to extract to. That evidence and gap map already may have a predefined code or it may be something that you as a team need to develop. But higher level extraction than what you'd get in a scoping review. And the analysis would also differ as well. So we, compared to a systematic review, don't do meta-analysis. So no to meta-analysis in, in scoping reviews and mapping reviews and evidence and gap maps. But what you'd see the difference again is mapping, evidence and gap map, because they did high level data, are actually more doing frequencies. Scoping reviews also doing frequencies, but we're also maybe doing some basic qualitative content analysis because we're going to be extracting potentially more textual data. And then we come down to the presentation of results. Scoping reviews can be death by table. They don't have to be, but they are. Uh, well, evidence and gap maps and even mapping reviews can develop these very beautiful online interactive visual maps of the available evidence, which are very powerful to policy makers and decision makers. So that's how they differ 
together.